He's pushing buttons. He's sliding stuff around. He's making uh, volume come out. He's making slides pop up. He's doing all that stuff. And nobody ever notices until it doesn't work right. <laughs> and as soon as something doesn't work right, everybody's like, oh, what's going on up there? Well, I can tell you what was going on up there. Brother Don suddenly grew two extra arms, and he was doing all of this, trying to get something to work to make the connections do what they were supposed to. And you know the crazy thing is, when it happens, he's already been through it, he's run everything, he's checked everything, and it's working perfectly right before service starts. And then service starts, and I believe this 100%, Satan puts little bugs in there to cause problems. Because if he can cause problems, you know what happens? We get distracted. We get distracted. When we get distracted, then we turn away from that and we begin to think of other things. And so I really believe 100% that all of those things that happen in service, that they're distractions that are put there from Satan himself, trying to keep our minds and our hearts away from where we need to be in the first place. And you know, that's just his, his uh, MO, so to speak. He always wants to keep us distracted so that we're not focused where we should be. And he does a really good job of it. Of course, the other thing you have to remember is this. It, he doesn't have to work hard because we're pretty easy to get distracted. Squirrel. Oh, sorry. Um, anyway, just like that, we're distracted, right? Easily. Well, there's been something going on lately that's kind of kept us distracted a lot. And so today, the, the message that I want you to, to, to see is the response for hard times. We'll be in 1 Chronicles today if you want to go ahead and start turning there. We'll be in 1 Chronicles, but what I want you to see is this. The question is, has anyone out there, has anyone out there or out there in Facebook land, has anyone out there been going through hard times lately? Anybody? Well, that's a dumb question, right? Dumb question. It's 2020. It's 2020, right? If something could go wrong, it happened this year. I mean, when else would there be a pandemic and the, the largest hurricane season we've seen in decades all at the same time? 2020 had a little something for everybody, and it, none of it was good. I saw a t-shirt the other day. I loved it. it. It had the star rating, you know, and it had one star. The 2020, one star underneath it said, not very good, wouldn't recommend doing it again. <laughs> Bad, right? 2020, it's been a terrible time, but guess what? <laughs> it's not over. As this terrible, horrible, no good, very bad year comes to a close, I want us to think about something. I want us to think about this. As this terrible, horrible, no good, very bad year comes to a close, then this. It seems to be going out as hard as it has been the whole year. Turn on the news. COVID-19. You know, it started out coronavirus, then somewhere it changed to COVID-19, and, and most of the people now just call it the virus. The virus, right? COVID-19. We thought that thing was going away. Everybody was starting to get back into their routines and starting to do things again and all of that, and suddenly, boom, here it is again, spiking all over the country. Places are shutting down again. They're threatening to close down the economy again. All of this stuff. It's going out just as hard as it came in. All of these hard times that are happening, and that's just one thing that's going on. You know, we always deal with a lot of things, but when you deal with them against the, uh, the backdrop of a pandemic, it seems to make it even harder. So how do we respond to something like this? How do we respond? These hard times, all of these hard times that have been going on, hard times have happened in life, not just the pandemic, the pandemic has been terrible. We understand. We agree with that. The hurricane season was awful. Listen, record numbers of destruction that were done in hurricanes. Right now, the, the small area down in, in South America uh, is just reeling from having two major hurricanes come across, one right behind the other. We saw this year at one point two hurricanes in the Gulf at one time coming to make landfall. How incredible is that? Louisiana has just been hit over and over and over all year. The Gulf Coast has just been hit over and over all year. 
all of these things going on with the hurricanes, but it's not just the hurricanes, it's not just the pandemics. You know what? People are struggling financially because the economy went down. So many things happen and so many people are struggling with finances. People are struggling with little things, what we would say little things of just figuring out how to see family. How to go see family. Thanksgiving, normally at Thanksgiving, you know what we usually do? My wife and, and daughter and I, and both my daughters, we usually go up to Tennessee and see my, my father and, and mother-in-law. We usually go up there and visit them. And we kind of were planning on doing that this year. My father-in-law called and said, please don't come. Please don't come. I'm afraid. I'm really scared of this virus. Please don't come. That it has some people so much in fear that they don't even gather together for uh, holidays to see their family. There are people that have lost loved ones and they couldn't have a proper funeral because people couldn't come together. There are people that have been in the hospital and no one with them. I saw on, on television, but this was something that was really happening in, in some of the major cities where people were, had the virus or even other things, and they were in the hospital. No one could come in, and they're literally dying. And, and they're in the hospital alone. Their loved ones are saying, they're going to die alone. Can I just please come be with them? I don't care about my own help. Nope, you can't come in. And they literally take out a cell phone, and they put the cell phone on FaceTime, and they do this with the patient, and the person has to say goodbye to their loved one over a telephone because they can't be with them. All of these things have been going on. It's been a hard time. And most of us can look at the things going on in life and say, man, how can it be any harder? Don't say that. Because then we find out the next week how much harder it can be. I don't know about everybody. It's been a rough two weeks at my house. We've had all kind of crazy things going on at my house. And so it's been a hard time. So the question then is, if we're all going through all these hard times and everything is tearing us down, how do we respond to something like this? Well, this is how. The real answer is... We worship. Wait a minute, preacher. Come on. We worship? Really? We worship. How, how can we worship when things are so bad? I mean, they're, the things that have got us at wit's end. We're at the end of our rope on so many things, and you say just worship? How can we do that? How can we not? How can we not? You see, the problem is that we get to those places and we're so distracted by everything else that's going on that we are turning our attention in places that it doesn't need to be. And so, we worship. Yes, really. Turn with me to 1 uh, Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8 through 11. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8 through 11. I want us to pay close attention to this passage that we see. If you're at, out in Facebook land, Open up your Bible at home. Turn to it. Like I've always said, listen, it's okay to write in your Bible. It's okay. Write in your Bible. Put notes in the margin. Highlight, underline, whatever it is that helps you be able to go back to that when the times get hard and remember, oh yeah, when times were so hard, this is a scripture that meant something to me. This is the passage in 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 16, beginning in verse 8. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Speak of all his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. So in all of this, in all of this that we're talking about, worship. Worship the Lord. You understand, here's the, the amazing thing. When we finally turn to worship, for the proper response when we're going through hard times is to worship our Lord. Why do I say it's the proper response? Well, here's another passage I'd like you to turn to. This passage is in the Old Testament in Exodus. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. Maybe some of you have heard of this before. It's the first two passages in the, new, in the Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Is that it? Okay, there's supposed to be another one. Let me turn to it here. Um, 
That's all I put up there. I, I made a mistake. I know none of you have ever made a mistake before. All right, if we can get to the, I can get to the right passage here. Hit the right thing with my finger. All right. So, the next uh, verse that I want us to see is this. You shall have no other gods before me. Now, why did I say I want to turn to Exodus when we're talking about worship and worship being the proper response? Well, look at this. God said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and you shall have no other gods before me. None. No other gods before me. And so if you have no other gods before me, that's the way that it's supposed to be, right? But that's not what was going on. What goes on when we end up having the, the, all of the hard times and we turn to things that we shouldn't turn to, what ends up happening is this. If we allow the hard times to take uh, over in our life, become number one in our life, then we make it a God. Okay, so follow me in this. If the hard times are the thing that's overwhelming us and we're letting that rule our life, then what we've done is we've allowed those hard times in our life to become a God. And it's taken all of our attention away from the God, from the only God, the holy God, the God, the great I am. It's taking all of our attention away from that. And the first commandment says, have no other gods before me. None. So if we've allowed those things to come into our life and take over in our life, they have become a God. And when they become a God, they take us away from the one that we're supposed to be worshiping in the first place. So what do we do? Think about this. When you're pouring your heart out in worship, when you're pouring your heart out in worship, it is impossible to dwell on hard times. Seriously. When you are pouring your heart out in worship, I mean, whether it's singing, whether it's praying, whether it's reading the scripture, whether it's giving, whatever it's doing, if you're pouring your heart out in worship, how easy is it to dwell on anything else? It's not. It's just impossible when you're truly worshiping God. The only thing that's coming out is what the Holy Spirit has put in, and the worship is coming out. Listen, <clears throat> After I had COVID and I couldn't be here for a couple of weeks, I came back into the church and I stood right down here and we were worshiping and we were singing. And as I stood and worshiped, suddenly it just washed over me the amazing things that God had done and brought me through this, this COVID. It was, I had such a, a bad case that I didn't even know I had it. Right? I didn't even know I had it until I found out I had to take a test and I found out I had it. I've had more symptoms since it left than I did while it was going on. And I was overwhelmed with joy and thankfulness to God because I have health conditions that I could have easily gone very south very fast. And as I stood there worshiping, there was nothing else that could happen except I was so overwhelmed that I just began to weep. I just began to, to weep thinking how great God is that he did those things, even in the hard times. And so while I was pouring out my heart in worship, there was no thoughts entering my mind except that worship. And that's the way it should be. When we are truly worshiping God, it's impossible to dwell on the hard times. So if we're going through the hard times and they've come to a place where we've made them a God in our life, the only way to take that away is to worship. When we worship, we're worshiping the God, the one that's supposed to be number one in our life, and all those other things begin to fade away. All those other things begin to fade away. Now here's the thing. So we look at this and we say this. In 1 Chronicles, why were they so overjoyed? Why were they so overjoyed? <clears throat> at that point in time, the Ark of the Covenant had been brought into the, the, the area there where David was. The ark of God had been brought into the area. Listen, the ark was where God lived, right? So the ark was brought into the people. The ark of God was coming there, meaning God was with them. That's why they were so overjoyed. Listen, David was dancing. They were playing loud instruments. They were singing. They were worshiping. Why? Because God was with them. 
God was with them. They couldn't help but worship because God was with them. Now hold on for a minute. Look at this. Today, God resides with every believer through his Holy Spirit. The people of God were so overwhelmed because God was among them, God was with them, all they could do is worship and sing and shout and fall down on their face and all of those things. Nothing else mattered because God was with them. And we, as believers today, are so blessed because through the death of Jesus Christ, God gave us the Holy Spirit and he pours himself out on us and every single believer can be filled with the Holy Spirit and have that presence of God in their life every day. We don't have to wait for the ark to be brought into our location to be excited that God is with us. He's with us every single day. And if God is with us every single day, why are we not overflowing with worship? That fact alone that God is with us, it should Fill us with true joy. True joy. We have hard times. We have hard times. But those hard times that come into our life, they're hard. But look, they're just temporary. And if we allow those hard times to control us, then we're missing out on the joy that we could have if we're truly worshiping God. And understanding that he is with us, that he is poured out upon us. And so if that's the case, that he's poured out upon us, then we should be worshiping every single day, even though hard times are very hard. Look at how David and the city responded to God being with them. When David and the city responded to God being with them, they were responding with every ounce of joy they had. Now listen, that's true worship. That's true worship. You say, well... You know, we, we like to worship. We come to church on Sunday and we worship. Okay? Standing in the pew with a frown on your face, singing Jesus loves me, isn't really worshiping. It's just not. If I sing the song, but I'm upset because it's not a hymn, I'm not really worshiping. If I sing the song, but I'm upset because it's not a more modern song, I'm not really worshiping. When I'm talking about worship, I'm talking about truly understanding that this is God and this is me and I have no claim in life except that God created me and that my creator and all of his ability and his love made me for someone to worship him. That's what he made me for, to worship him. And when I stop and realize how insignificant I am, when standing next to my creator, I cannot do anything but worship. And to be overjoyed knowing that God has brought me through all the things that he brought me through in my life. And if that doesn't get me fired up, knowing that he's given me salvation, that at the end of this life, I get to spend eternity with him. That thinking about that and pouring that into your heart, worship is what naturally comes out. We come into a place and we say, we're going to worship, but we don't. Why? Why is it that we're not worshiping? Because we have not allowed ourselves to dwell on God, but instead dwell on the hard times in our life, and that God has become more important than the God. And we've allowed that to happen. Listen, we in the United States today, oh, we're so sad. Everything is so bad because all this stuff is going on. Well, listen, the people in the time of David, they were worshiping, they were so overjoyed. What had been going on during all that time? They had been going through a war with the Philistines. That was some very hard times. They were continually fighting with the Philistines. They've been going through that war with the Philistines, and now they have been able to bring in the ark, and so they're overjoyed. Because even though those times were really, really hard, they made it through. And not only did they make it through, they made it through because of God, and now he's with them to worship. Satan tries to force us to dwell on the hard times, and by doing so keeps us from God. That's what Satan wants us to do. Remember I told you, I really believe all the distractions that happen is Satan trying to keep us distracted so that we're not focusing on God. Well, if those little distractions don't work, then they're bigger distractions. There are hard times that happen in our life. These hard times come, even even the scripture, Jesus said you will have trouble in this world. You will. 
He didn't say you might. You will have trouble in this world. Those hard times come, and Satan tries to use those to keep us from dwelling on God and instead dwelling on the hard times. And when we do so, how can we worship if we've turned our heart away from the one that we worship? How do we do that? Well, here's the, the uh, incredible thing about worship. Here's what I want you to really grab a hold to and understand about worship. It doesn't just take our mind off things for a little while. Worship doesn't just take our mind off things for a little while. You know, we as, as, a, as human beings, and especially as Americans, we're, we're free to do things the way we want to do it, right? And so we think that we control everything in our life. And by doing that, there are some times that things happen and we're so upset and we just want to take our mind off things for a little while. And you know what many people do? They turn to substances. They turn to substances to take their mind off their troubles. They turn to drugs. They turn to alcohol. They turn to pornography. They turn to all kind of things to take their mind off their troubles. If I can just not think about it for a little while, then maybe it'll be better. If I can just get away from here for a little while, maybe it'll be better. If I can just, you know what, if I can just go on a vacation, I'd be better. How many people went on vacation and when you got back you needed a vacation? <laughs> Most of us, right? When that high or that drunk or that vacation or whatever it is is over, usually what's happened is the trouble has compounded. Now not only did you have the trouble you had to start with, but now you got a hangover. Now you got... Uh, you don't know what you did while you were all messed up. You, you overspent while you were on vacation trying to uh, feel better, but instead what happened is now you're in financial trouble, so it's all worse. But when you worship, when you worship, you find the strength to do all things through Christ. See, when you try to use things to get you out of the trouble that's happening, to take it away for a little while, it usually ends up compounding. But what happens when you worship, it doesn't just change it for a little while, it changes it to the point where you find the strength to go through the things that you have to go through. You find the strength to do all things through Christ. You find that strength in worship. Where is that strength? It's in God. And when you're worshiping, what are you doing? You're getting closer to God. He's going to drive you through those things. It's not going to be worse, it's going to be better. But the problem is that so many people get so wound up in all of their hard times and all of the stuff that's happening, and listen, I understand it's easy. It's easy to do that. I'm just as guilty as anybody. It's easy to do that. Things just keep pounding down on you, and sooner or later you think, I just can't take anymore. Worship. Because you know what happens when you turn to worship? When you're driven to your knees and you just can't take anymore and you begin to worship, you know what happens? God takes that burden that you can't handle. He takes that burden off of you and carries it for you. He helps you through those times that are hard. He gives you the strength to get through what you don't think you're ever going to get through. There's things that happen in life and we wonder, will I ever, ever recover from this? Worship. Worship. That's what we were designed for, worship. And when we get to those places and we wonder, will we ever recover? Will we ever recover? Not without God's help. Worship. Give it to Him. Pour out your heart to Him. God, here I am to worship you. Whatever it is that you want to do with me, do it. Do whatever it is. God, if I go through this, I can only do it in your strength. And you say, well, I just don't know. I don't know anybody that's ever done that and been through things in that way that I can look to for strength. His name is Jesus. Jesus prayed so hard that he had drops like blood because of what he had to go through that was mounting on him. The pressure and everything that was going to happen was so great, but he went to God with it. Jesus was nailed to a cross and hung up to die, to suffocate over hours and hours of time. He could not handle that alone. He went to the Father and said, if I have to do this, then you put me through it. God gave him the strength to do what he had to do. 
And he went through that. Jesus went to the Father when he had no more strength to do anything, and God lifted him up. He gave him the strength to do what he had to do. Did it make the nails hurt any less? No. But he was able to sustain. He was able to sustain and do what had to be done so that you and I would have forgiveness for our sin. He did it. He went through the hard times. I don't know anybody that's ever been through something as hard as I've been through. Jesus. Look at Jesus. He's been through more than we could ever imagine. And God saw him through. Worship is what we were designed for. We were designed to worship our Savior. When the times are so hard, we don't know what else to do. When the times are so hard, we can't see the end. When we wonder, will we be able to carry this burden any longer? I, I just don't think that I can make it through. Worship. Worship. It's that intimate relationship that we can come to our Father knowing that He's the only one, the only one that ever existed that can take what we're going through and help us, give us the strength to go through it. Sometimes we just want Him to take it away. Sometimes He does. But sometimes He doesn't take it away. He just gives us the strength to go through it. And when He gives us the strength to go through it, we're stronger on the other side. Sometimes he takes it away. But we need to be worshiping. We need to pour that out to him. Listen, it's a, a, an incredible thing. Think about this. If you stand and you sing, Amazing grace, there's just not any other thoughts going through my mind. The only thing that I can concentrate on when I'm pouring out my heart to God is Him. And all of those other things that may be going on in my life, when I am come to the end of that time of worship, God has given me the strength to make it through whatever it is. He brings me through. Maybe I take one step and i got to start worshiping again because it's still too hard. But I continue to worship. And as I do, God brings me through. The people of Israel stood on the banks of the Jordan River. And the water was rushing down. We're talking white water. It was terrible. The water was flooded all out on the banks. All of this was happening. And they had been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And they're standing there looking at the other side and they're saying, It's too hard. We can't get across this. It can't happen. It can't happen. But when they turned their hearts to God and they began to worship and the priests that stood there before were given the command to step in the water when they through worship took that step you see that was being obedient through worship they took the step and they stepped into this water and an amazing thing happened waters piled up up river they piled up they stopped flowing and all the water that was here flowed out to sea and the water standing up. And they said cross. And they crossed on dry ground. They didn't walk across on strategically placed rocks. They walked across on ground that had previously been covered with water and the next moment was dry. And they walked across into the promised land. Into the promised land. And they took stones out of the river and they set them up on the side of the bank to remember what happened and how God brought them through. And once they completed it, the water was released and rushed back out. And all their hard times stopped after that. Wait, that's not right, is it? Their hard times didn't stop, but they could look back at that monument that they stacked up on the side of that river and remember that God is able, no matter what the... the problem is in life, God is able. For you that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to ask you to think about this. Just for a moment, go with me. Those that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, go with me for just a moment. Go back to that moment that He called you. And you realize for the first time that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. 
and you either got up and walked down the aisle or you prayed with someone or maybe even by yourself. You prayed and you said, God, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior and I ask you to take away my sin and come into my life and be the Lord of my life. Think back to that moment and how incredible it was when you realized that he did just that. Now fast forward, whatever times that you're going through, whatever the hard times are, I want to ask you, when it gets so hard that you can't even think straight, go back to that moment and remember how he saved you and see if your heart doesn't overflow with worship. Praise him, worship him, sing to him, all of those things, and I promise you that when you do, God will see you through. He will give you the strength. He may not take away whatever it is, but he's going to help you get through it. He's going to give you that strength. 2020, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad year, right? Awful. But you know what the incredible thing is? As bad as it was, God has been with us the entire time. He has seen us through every moment. He has carried us all the way through. And he will continue to do that even into 2021. He will continue to do that no matter what. But he requires no other God before him. None. And so therefore, instead of allowing those hard times to become that God in your life, give your heart of worship back to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Now here's the question, though. Here's the question. Can you worship? Can you worship? You cannot worship if you do not know Jesus. You can't worship if you don't know Jesus. So in the hard times that you're going through, and I'm giving you the the answer of worship, if you don't know him, you can't worship him. Can't worship someone you don't know. So I want to encourage you today, if you don't know him, today, let today be the day that you give your heart to him, that you give your heart to Jesus, and for the first time, you know truly what worship is. And it's the thing that gets you through no matter what else is going on in your life. Tough year. Very tough for some people. Tougher even still for others. And it's not over. The hard times just continue to roll. I told you the last two weeks in my house have been tough. It seems like one thing after another after another I told somebody the last few weeks I've I begun to remember what it means when they say when it rains it pours. There's been so many things that have happened. But you know, not a single one of them are bigger than God. Not one of them. And God has brought me through and will continue to bring me through. And one of the ways he brings me through is through the prayers of his people. We need to pray for one another. That's a form of worship, you understand? Pray for one another. I love the song. We used to sing it all the time. You pray for me and I'll pray for you. Right? Pray for one another. We pray for one another. That's a form of worship. And as we do so, God uses that to touch people. And as we go through these hard times, you know what is so incredible? Is God uses that for those who don't know him to see And that alone can draw them to him. We can be a witness to God as we go through the hard times in our life. So I encourage you, when the time is so tough that you just don't know what to do, worship. Worship. Worship him. Right now we're going to have a time of invitation. If today you said, you know, I've been going through hard times and I don't know the answer and I don't know how to worship because I've never met Jesus, I want you to come up and talk to me about that. I want to introduce you today. Maybe you're here today and you say, you know what, I know him, but I've not allowed myself to worship. I've been putting other gods ahead of him, and I just want to come to the altar and ask him to forgive me and to help me worship him every day. The altar's open, whatever it is. Maybe you want to come and pray for your family or someone else. Maybe something's going on in your life that you just, only one you can tell is God. That's a great place to do it at the altar. So it's open. You come and share that time with him. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today and we do thank you for the time together. God, I thank you for worship. Father, understanding that it's because of you that we can worship. 
God, without you, we would have no hope, but you created us, and you've given us an opportunity to accept your son, Jesus, as our Savior, that we would have a, a reconciliation with you, God, that together, Father, we will spend an eternity with you. And as we go through those hard times, Father, you will not turn your back. You will not let us down. God, you will come to us. You will lift that burden, Father, to you. It's easy. I pray, God, that today, all over the place, whether it be in Facebook land or, or here, wherever it is, God, that you would just touch lives. Father, today we want to give everything to you. We want to worship you completely and totally, Father. And we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Won't you stand?